coming! Hooray, hooray! Thank you for coming! You okay with that, right? I'm going to take it. No, that's technically trash. That is a lot Sealed them in the building, tried to light the buildings on fire, uh, but yet they're holding these gentlemen here, not only here, but across the country and other, uh, other people. 
many pension facilities. So. How does it make you feel as a father of somebody who's here? Uh, the community tried to lay some trials. Um, we have in America, we're supposed to have a positive right to a speedy trial. We're also supposed to get innocent and Oh, okay. Just kneel down. It will be perfect for the prisoners. There we go. Got it? Uh, you tell me when you're ready. We need the DC. Okay, one, two, three. Can you do the same thing? Sure. Get your camera. Next thing I know. I'm sorry. Sorry. Good easy. Okay. I do, I do. On three, ladies. On three. One, two, three. Because I mean, this way. Got a ball. Hello, beautiful people. Yeah, yeah. And we'll connect. Yay, Matt! Yay, Matt! Oh, because I don't care what we're Please be with us 
as we gather in your name. Amen. 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 All right, thank you, Father. Now we are distributing the song sheets. If you have the stack, please, you know, keep it, keep it moving. Um, I would like to invite, we, I have several letters written from prisoners who are actually sent to me from inside the prison. Uh, and I would like to invite if somebody would be willing to step up here and read a letter. We'll be reading some of those. We'll also be reading letters. I, I wish to have a family member too. Oh, okay. Oh, would you like to read a letter? Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, come on. Okay. We'll, 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 get, we'll get rolling with some letters here. Okay, I got Steve from DC. He's going to read a letter for us. Okay, I'm going to read an anonymous letter from someone inside. To look, to look ahead, America, I'd like to thank you for all that you are doing to expose the truth to the public. You're an inspiration for us Capitol Patriots and for millions of Patriots around the country. I'm sure I can speak for everyone here and our loved ones. When I saw we love you and the great work you're doing. I truly believe it is only a matter of time before the truth spreads like a Chinese lab experiment through the population. Too soon? Perhaps my contribution will give the public more depth of understanding of our character from the front line. You are true patriots, and we are also grateful for everything you do. Thank you so much, and we are all praying for you and our country. Fellow Americans, we have been sitting here in the D.C. jail for months in solitary confinement with no visitation. We are threatened with violence on a regular basis by guards, who at any moment in the middle of the night will unlock our cell door, turn off their body cam, and beat us in handcuffs, accompanied by a few of their cooperators. Do you know what it's like to live under the constant threat of being beaten and maced by a group of correctional officers? Officers who clearly hate our patriotism and our attempts to keep our own spirits up as the Bible teaches us through the book of Job. Let me tell you about my fellow patriots here before you assume we might deserve such treatment. The media will have you believe that the men in here, because of January 6, are even violent, are evil, violent, and racist people. I want to tell you from my firsthand experience that this could not be further from the truth. I want to tell you from firsthand experience just how badly CNN and other liberal mainstream media outlets absolutely lie about us. These men are the most respectful and well-behaved inmates this jail has ever had. I've been told that by high-ranking correctional officers here. We are also very diverse. We are white, black, brown, Arab, Christian, Jewish, straight, and even transgender. We are not white supremacists or, or hateful at all. We have good children, best friends, and significant others of all colors and creeds who we love as a family. I cannot express enough how much we all love this beautiful country and the rich melting pot that it is. We sing the national anthem at the top of our lungs every night from behind our locked steel doors. We are just regular freedom-loving Americans with a tendency to <clears throat> towards humorous shenanigans. Although you may find that hard to believe if you listen to the media about the evils of YouTube satire and Lego sets lately. <laughs> As for me, I love God and I love America. I love backpacking in the wilderness and pushing my body to the limits. I've also been involved through several volunteer and charity organizations, everything from helping senior citizens and special needs children to raising money for disease research and the homeless. I have a great sense of humor. I value good-hearted and smart people. I try to avoid bigots and evil people. I like conservative traditional values and I believe strongly in individual liberty. I can tell you now from personal knowledge of these men in here with me that none of us planned or had any intention of overthrowing the U.S. government. None of us had any evil in our hearts on January 6th. 
nobody yelled anti-American slogans, burned an American flag, screamed F the police, brought guns, or tried to kill any officers or civilians. Let the liberal media, yet the liberal media will try to convince, pardon me, yet the liberal media will try and convince you that we were fueled by a ferocious hate for America, that we were motivated by racism and intended harm that day and don't deserve mercy. This is the very same media that ignored, minimized, and even covered for more than 500 violent anti-American, anti-police riots last year. The left-wing riots that were the source of billions of dollars in damage to personal property and the middle-class economy saw three police officers murdered, dozens shot, thousands injured, and more than 24 fellow citizens killed. Yet rarely any serious ramifications. They glossed over the brick-throwing, car-torching, mob havoc as mostly peaceful unrest. Not only did the violent rioters in these 500 left-wing riots not get punished, they were treated like victims and heroes and cheered on by the left. They scream F the police and the police get defunded. They hate our country and have us remove Jefferson, Lincoln, Columbus, and the men who built America from our public squares. They want to destroy free market capitalism from their MacBooks produced by Chinese slave labor. Isn't that interesting? The men here are good guys. We love our freedom, our jobs, our churches, our family gatherings, and our great President Donald Trump. Last year, last year we watched all that get taken from us by a, Mar a Marxist ethno state. China created pandemic. Slivers that were left were so thoroughly dripping in leftist propaganda that we didn't even want or recognize them anymore. Things like Facebook and pro sports. We had been lied to about everything from the Covington Catholic school kids to the COVID lab leak theory and censored by social media all along the way. We watched hours upon hours of public hearings in many states about election fraud and saw a lot of compelling testimonies. Half of the country innocently wanted to see, to just see a forensic audit done. We felt like it'd be totally understandable after an election with mass mail out voting for the first time ever. We were ignored and called stupid by the people who always lied about everything. CNN and every other leftist media outlet repeatedly lied about conservatives character, calling us brain dead, hateful liars. Social media kept censoring our thoughts and silencing our voices, leaving us no way of expressing our First Amendment in our own defense. Our jobs were lost, our churches closed, social gatherings were eliminated, and then we were censored and barred from social media. Social media was the last place we had left to gather while our country was shut down during the pandemic. How do you think it made us feel that our values speech and experience were banned on that last and only forum we had. Where did our freedom go? We had a bad year and January 6th was just the day that rose it to the top. It was the day we cried out desperately to be listened to. We are not monsters. We are countrymen who feel beaten down, slandered and ignored. We feel forgotten and on the short side of the double standard could really use a compassionate hug from, from a loved one more than another midnight jailhouse beating by correctional officers. We are praying for mercy, we are praying for justice, we are praying for America. Amen. 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 Amen.
Yeah, it's right there with the guy with the uh, curious George helmet and the pin hat on. He's our water carrier. So, uh, the U.S. Marine, am I correct? Chris, what's up? U.S. Marine, right? Yeah, uh, we have a U.S. Marine who is uh, guarding our water supply. So, right over here, help yourself, please. The water's in good hands, I'm sure. From the shores of Iwo Jima to this uh, wall right over here where the water is. Please help yourself. Do not get dehydrated out here, please. Um, I would like to introduce a special guest. Uh, she came to our first rally, which I think I see some familiar faces here of some folks who came to our first rally a month ago in front of, in front of the Department of Justice. I can't tell you how many people came to me and said, oh, that's a, that's a spec off. You're going to get us all arrested or you're... You must work for the FBI, this is a trap. But still we had about 15 people that came out, I'd say maybe 20, 25 maybe. And one of, and, and this individual came and spoke to that crowd and has been leading rallies um, also in, in New York State. So please um, put your hands together for Ms. Kara Casanova. Yay! Yay! Thank you, Matt, and thank you Look Ahead America for putting together this. Uh, yeah. Could you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, uh, Matt, for putting this together, and I'm hoping the guys inside can see us. Uh, can hear us. Can they hear us? You think? Yes. Let's give them. Let them go. Let's let the guys inside hear us. Let them go. 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 I know that one of the guys. His mom is here, right? He's, his window's right there. He's live on the phone. He's live on the phone. Can you hear us? He's on the phone right now. He's on the phone. We love, love you guys. Just 
got a live message from inside the prisoner, Miss Tara. I just love the fact that your lipstick's now all over this thing. The, the message is, they're on the phone. Uh, the, the, the prisoner inside is on the phone. He says they're closing the doors so the men cannot see our rally. He says the window faces you over the cemetery. Can't stop us. Yeah, so they're, they're actively preventing uh, the prisoners from seeing this rally. That's what we're dealing with here. Bullshit. All right, so we are going to get started with some songs uh, in a moment. I, hopefully everyone has the song sheets, and uh, we're going to need a really good, not me, a good uh, vocalist who can sing and knows these songs well to come up and help lead that. But we have one more letter I would like to read. It's actually handwritten. It's not very long. And would somebody volunteer to come up and read uh, one more letter, please? A handwritten letter. Yeah, I'm just going to go. It's a state school. All right, this is, um, oh, what's your name, sir? Gene. Gene, you, ha you are a family member of a prisoner, correct? I am. And who's your, what, what, are, what are they being held in here? Uh, they're being held for, uh, just like everybody else, uh, on bullshit. All right, so we're glad you came out today. We're happy to protest for your son. Please, uh, I'll read this letter, and then we're going to get good with the songs. Again, help yourself to the water. It, it's free. We're, we want you to stay hydrated. It's right over here. And, uh, you know, uh, careful of the sun. Have they been charged? Yes. They haven't been charged. They've been charged. They been well, many of these people have been charged, but they've been denied bail on the basis of things like having a Lego set. Yes, they were found with a Lego set. At first, they thought it was assembled, but then it was not assembled. So clearly, they are a threat to the country. Um, how have you ever stepped on Legos in the middle of the night? You can see where they're coming from, but I, I don't think it justifies denying bail. Sorry. Okay, this letter is from Chris Worrell, and it, uh, this letter is from, yeah, from Chris Worrell, and it goes out to Marthy and, Martha and Mickey. Thank you, and all that signed the card in your Sunday school class for your prayers. I don't believe we knew each other yet. But the fact that you all took the time to show me love and support is humbling. The miscarriage of justice and the ignorance of the U.S. Constitution is truly beyond words. In addition, the lack of medical care for my cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, for 115 days really shows the lack of empathy, morals, and humanity we have in this country. If you ask me, the one thing missing in these people's lives making these decisions is God. I have always been a believer in God, the Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, but not always a good Christian. Throughout this time, I have renewed my faith and learned that forgiveness and love through God has amazing power. Amen. There are still times of struggle and even times I question if I am even worthy of God's grace. God loves you, man. My wife and friends, and now you, all, even tell me about the support out there for us. But it seems like the more time goes by, the harder it is to believe any of it matters. I feel like I have been persecuted and sentenced to death. The doctors have mocked my choice of alternative care on the outside. But yet here I sit without any treatment at all, while continually having and showing worsening conditions. I, with I will continue to pray and hope that one day this will all end. If you would like, you can also reach out to my wife, Trish. If you do, please tell her that I love her. And I miss her 
with all my heart and soul. Trish could use some support and uplifting to help show her we have support and love out there. Amen. Amen. God bless. It truly touched my heart that complete strangers like you all reached out to me. I feel very blessed. I never thought in a million years this would happen. But you all are the first to do so. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. I believe in no coincidence, and because of that, I know in my heart that God sent you to me to spread his love through you. Thank you again for taking time out of your lives for me. I hope we can stay in contact. And one day soon, meet each other as Trish and I love it in the Blue Ridge Mountains. And I know exactly where uh, Donalaga is, I don't know, I, I know I didn't say that right. Uh, God bless you all to my new family. I love you all. Political prisoner, Chris Worrell. Hey, Chris. one guy who 
uh, got this message out to a family member. I think this was after the Mark Levin coverage of what's happening here. He said that uh, if anything happens in here, it is not an accident. And he said to his wife, I love you with all my heart. Babe, tell everyone, get a hold of the U.S. Marshals. Our lives are being threatened in here. We put in complaints about the officer that threatened Scott, and the officer who made the complaint has been working the unit and also brought the papers to show the grievances were filed back to the people that filed them that way. Then last night, they played us on our Tim. Then today, they had the phones off till after everyone was back in their cell, off the two hours of wreck. Tablets just came back on when I messaged you. We were told if we file lawsuits while being locked up, there would be retaliation. There is a lot going on, and even saying all this here is probably being watched. So if something happens to any one of us in here, just know that we were threatened. We are nonviolent. We're not thinking wrongly or planning any wrongdoing. If for some reason if you don't hear from me or us, then DC jail staff has either locked us down or made it to where we cannot communicate. Where is the due process? Where is innocent until proven guilty in a court of law and convicted by a jury of your peers? How can people ever get a fair trial now? The media and the government have prejudiced the cases far too much, referring to it as an insurrection or sedition, even though no one was armed and no one's been charged with insurrection. Many of these people were allowed or waved into the building or simply trespassed. None of them have been allowed their right to attorney-client privilege. None of them have been able to prepare for their defense and see the so-called evidence against them. This is not the American legal system or how it's supposed to operate. Finally, release the 14,000 hours worth of footage. Amen. Christ was born across the sea with the glory in his bosom. 
Jesus that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us start to make men free. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah.
have a sneak it down on her hands and knees in a white pantsuit at the child separation center down at the border. Where's the politician down here? What do you see? Why? Because we, you and I, we have lacked muscle. We have neglected to develop community organizing in this country on our side, on our worldview. So I'm asking you to commit to volunteer to work ahead America. We will put you to work. We have leadership in states all across the country. We need hours from you. We need your talents. So that next time something like this happens, I don't know if it's going to happen in time to make a difference for these folks. But we will never let this happen again. I keep forgetting to get one. All right. So now we're going to hand it back to Ms. Monk, who's going to lead us. And, uh, oh, are we going to do a Star Spangled Banner? Okay, we're going to do a Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> Okay, what else now? Right. Oh, oh, have you seen by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last evening whose broad stripes and bright stars through the barrel of the sky Sing. And it's about France, but 
it's really about all of us and our guys up there. So, Ms. Buck. Just real quick, I want to say it is 2.2 miles from the Capitol to this building. Every congressperson or senator can come down here and see this for themselves. Tell them that. Okay. Now, um, if, if you could hold my phone real quick so I can get the word. <laughs> Yeah, they can go inside. That's what we need to do. They need to tour this facility. That's what we need our Congress people and senators to do. So, do you hear the people sing, singing the song of angry men? It is the music of a people who will not be slaves again. When the beating of your heart echoes the beating of the drums, there's a life about to start when tomorrow comes. Will you join in our crusade? You will be strong and stand with me. Beyond the barricade, is there a world you long to see? Then join in the fight that will give you the right to be free. Do you hear the people sing, singing the song of angry men? It is a music of a people who will not be slaves again. When the beating of your heart echoes the beating of the drums, there's a life about to start when tomorrow comes. Will you give up? You can give, so I'd rather make it last. Well, what will you stand and take your chance? The blood of the martyrs will water the battles of France. Do you hear the people sing, singing the song of angry men? It is the music of a people who will not be slaves again. When the beating of your heart echoes the beating of the drums, there is a life about to start when tomorrow comes. There is a life about to start when tomorrow comes. I'm um, just going to want a trip of your right. so hold on. Yeah. One of the fathers is going to read a letter you wrote to the op-ed. Uh, op We're going to have another like 30 second statements. Then we're going to wrap it up with a uh, couple more songs. And uh, then, oh, okay, I'll get to you. I'll get to you. All right, here you go. Hey, my name's Gene Sibick. I'm from Buffalo, New York. My son is held in here. This is a letter to the, to the editor that I wrote to the Buffalo News. Nancy Pelosi announced the formation of a partisan select committee to investigate the 6th January, quote, insurrection, unquote. Although one might say the committee is bipartisan with the inclusion of Representative Cheney, she is not a Republican in many aspects. The public should be concerned about the partisan nature of this committee. The House minority should immediately file a motion against this committee denouncing contamination of the jury pool for political purposes from the podium, Nancy Pelosi, calling them insurrectionists because it destroys the presumption of innocence. It is also incumbent upon our elected representatives to look into the conditions in which individuals are being held in uh, D.C. in violation of their rights supposedly guaranteed by the United States Constitution, specifically Amendment 6 which, quote, guarantees the rights of criminal defendants, including the right to public trial without unnecessary delay. Amendment 8, which states, excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishment inflicted. This amendment prohibits the federal government from imposing unduly harsh penalties on criminal defendants, either as the price, um, as the price for obtaining pretrial release. My name is Kayvon, I'm the most famous half Persian comedian in the world. I see a lot of people here today, I see Asians, black people, Iranians, white, but I only see three colors, red, white, and blue. Yeah. What we have here is a double standard, they destroyed our cities for the entire year and now one four hour little event, they're calling it a riot, an insurrection, they're calling it a coup. What it was was a frat party, a costume party, a night at the museum, and it was just a little event that Nancy Pelosi was scared of, which we were scared of.
scared our entire year 2020. So, I have two questions. Who framed Roger Rabbit and who killed Ashley Babbitt? Let's free these people right here. We need to free them. USA! 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 We have a gentleman here who came all the way from Idaho. All the way from Idaho, so I told him I'd give him a minute on the mic. Can't, can't say no to somebody who came all that way. There you go, my friends. Thank you, Matt. Do we have any Americans in the house? Uh -huh. That's what I thought. I want to thank you all. My name is O. I want to thank you all for standing up for these prisoners, the injustice, the atrocities being committed against fellow Americans for exercising their rights. Please know there are hundreds of thousands, millions of people that feel the same way as we do today. They just can't be here, but trust me, they are here with us in spirit. God bless America. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. We're going to have a, a minute from this gentleman as well. Please introduce yourself. Uh, Christopher Wright, everybody's very conservative in New York. I just want to come out to here and say I love my country. I support all my fellow patriots. One of my earliest memories in life was watching the Berlin Wall fall and over in Germany when I was a kid. And that showed me what freedom looks like for the very first time. And I knew from that day forth I would fight for freedom. And I'm here now to this day to show all my fellow Americans that this is injustice. This is the these people need due process. And until they get it, I'll be out here to fight on their behalf and fight for America and fight for freedom. God bless everybody out there listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, one or two more speakers, then we're going to close it out with some songs. Hey, journalists, the water's for you too. It's okay. You can take some. <laughs> Hi, I wasn't born there. I wasn't born there. I was born in Europe, in Italy. But let me tell you, as an immigrant, this is my country, and I love this country. I never thought, guess what happened? That I will see this in my lifetime, what they're doing to innocent people. This is not America, not America that I came to. This is like China or Russia in the old days. Because even Russia now is getting better than us. Fight! Fight for your rights! Fight for everything that you stand! I came here, I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I won't be home until 11. And let me tell you, even if it was for just one minute, I would still have come here. Fight for your rights! God bless America! Yeah. Alright, thank you everybody. Um, we're going to have uh, another family member speak for about a minute. Here, here you go, please introduce yourself. Hi, good afternoon everybody. My name is Ned Lang. Thank you very much for coming. It's great to see so many people. I was here uh, about a month ago in front of the Department of Justice. We spoke. There wasn't many of us, but by God, we're growing. And I appreciate that. So my son, Jake Lang, he's been here now since, a, uh, since January 13th. He's been uh, in lockdown, solitary confinement now for the last two and a half months. Put the mic here. Two and a half months in a hole. Two and a half months in a hole. Put the mic to your mouth. Okay. All right, right in front. I'm oh, sorry. Two, two and a half months in a hole. Can you believe that? Last time we were down here, the whole Patriot unit was locked down for eight days. Eight days solitary confinement in their cells for no apparent reason. You think the people that run this jail should be locked in their cells for eight days with no, no human contact, no contact with anybody else, just food, and that's it, no showers, no nothing? No way. So the problem, the, the bottom line is, is this. This is unfair, not right, un-American. Who's called out by three times in the seven of them? Back up against the wall with no, uh, with no, um, 
with no with nothing. They took my son's clothes away. They took his everything, his, his legal papers, everything away when they locked him in the hole the last time. So he's got nothing but the Bible. Dad, Platitudes by Jake Lang, July 15th. Blessed are the grateful, for they are reflected reflection of the Lord. Blessed are the predestined, for they have answered the call of God. Blessed are the weak, for they prefer the power of Christ to the glory of God. Blessed are the ones doubtful, for the new faith proves the fruit of the Spirit. Blessed are the repentant, for they knew what they what they did or what they will do. Blessed is the long, for the Spirit will confront them. Blessed are the outcasts, for they are gathered in the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the forgiven, for Christ has chosen them above all others. Dad, I'm praying for your safety and courage tomorrow in front of the jail and everyone else there. Leave your iPhone camera recording in your shirt pocket in case anything happens. You believe this? God will protect you. Love you so much. Patriots will never bow to tyranny. The heart, the heart and soul in America rests in free men's bravery. God bless America. And I pledge to you, we will start a class action lawsuit against this prison because of what they're doing now.
You have any full fuel work for us? Hmm? You had a fuel work for something to say, something to impress in? Uh, I'm just glad that uh, we can exercise our, our civic duty to uh, protest uh, any time that uh, there is injustice in the world, especially in this country. If we can't do it, then who can? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.